Well, thank you very much. And today, I'm signing an executive order to ensure that the federal government lives by a very simple rule, hire American. We've been doing it at a level that hasn't been done, maybe ever. Uh, I'll also be taking firm disciplinary action against the leadership of the Tennessee Valley Authority, which has sadly and cruelly betrayed American workers. And we have some of those great American workers with us at the table. This is the Cabinet Room, and it's an honor to have you in the Cabinet Room and being at the Oval Office. We're joined by the Vice President, Congressman Tim Burchett, who's doing a fantastic job in the state of Tennessee, Secretary of Labor Eugene Scalia, Acting Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security Ken Cuccinelli. Where's Ken? Hi, Ken. I didn't see you down there. That's great. Doing a great job. Why did you? Keeping you busy, right? <laughs> We're keeping you busy, Ken. Recently, the CEO of the Tennessee Valley Authority, Jeffrey Lyash, made a disastrous and heartless decision. The TVA announced that it would lay off over 200 American workers and replace them with cheaper foreign workers brought in from overseas. The Tennessee Valley Authority leadership then ordered the American workers to train their foreign replacements, rubbing salt in their very open wounds. So. We're going to bring in workers. They're going to be foreign workers. And people from Tennessee and some other states right around it uh, are going to train them what to do and how to do it. It doesn't work that way. As we speak, we're finalizing H-1B regulations so that no American worker is replaced ever again. H-1Bs should be used for top, highly paid talent to create American jobs, not as inexpensive labor program to destroy American jobs. Sitting at the table are six of the TVA workers who were ordered to train the foreign labor flown in to replace them. I want you and your colleagues to know that my administration will not be putting up with, I happen to know, a young woman who's been uh, very active over the last couple of years because we were together on Disney and a couple of other things. And it all seems to be working out pretty well. Thank You're doing you a great so job. Thank you. And I thank you for it. But that's why I'm formally removing the chairman of the board, James Thompson, and board member Richard Howarth. If the TVA does not move swiftly to reverse their decision to rehire their workers, then more board members will be removed. We have the absolute right to remove board members. And the board makes the decision. I don't make the decision. I saw there was an ad on television uh, talking about the amount of money that the chairman makes, and it's a ridiculous amount of money. But we have the right to re replace the board, and the board is the one, the only ones that get the right to then hire a new person. Furthermore, the board must immediately hire that new CEO who puts the interests of American workers first. The current CEO, Jeff Liash, is ridiculously overpaid. He earns $8 million a year. Did you know that? $8 million. He's the highest-paid government official of any country anywhere in the world. Now, I don't know that you call him officially a government. It might be a public-private. It may be something. As a long time ago, it was established, the Tennessee Valley Authority. But he gets $8 million a year. So that was just a succession of deep swamp things happening, and uh, it's a disgrace. But he gets $8 million per year, and I can think of about uh, almost 100 percent of the people I know would take that job. <laughs> and it's not a very hard job. I mean, you have not a lot of debt, not a lot of anything, right? Public service is just that. Those who take these jobs must be focused on the public good, not on personal profit. Uh, he would have taken the job for millions and millions of dollars less but nobody asked him to do that. Okay, he would have gone for less. He could have had him for four million, six million, seven million, two million, one million, probably five hundred thousand a year. But the new CEO must be paid no more than five hundred thousand dollars a year, which is still a significant amount more than the president of the United States makes. And I donate my salary. I've donated it. From what I hear, I'm the only president to do that. You'll have to check on that, but that's what I've heard. I'm very surprised to hear that. But I donate my full salary. I don't take it. The board must work to ensure the CEO does not receive a lavish compensation package upon his departure, too. We don't want him leaving, and then he gets a big check for millions and millions of dollars. 
We want the TVA to take action on this immediately, lower energy prices in the states of Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. I love all those states. Uh, any additional states you can think of there? I, I don't know. Let's see. So we're talking about Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky, Mississippi, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. Great states there, every one of them. So let this serve as a warning to any federally appointed board. If you betray American workers, then you will hear two simple words. You're fired. You're fired. It's ridiculous. The man's getting $8 million. It would be interesting to see how much money he made before this. And I have no idea. Maybe he made more. I don't know, but I doubt it. But it would be interesting <laughs> to see. He got this position. Must have been politically inspired, because I can think of uh, probably almost everybody in the nation would have liked this position, including every one of the media folks across the table from me. I would they say that everybody would have liked this position. So with that, we're getting rid of him in one form or another. Either the board's going to do it, we're going to do it, but he's gone. And uh, he's done not a great job. He's done not even a good job in certain ways. Uh, plants in Kentucky, he could have kept the plant open in Kentucky if he wanted to, even if they retrofitted the plant. And he didn't do that, did he, Congressman? He wouldn't do that. We asked him to do it. He didn't want to do it. We said, that's okay. And here we are uh, doing what we're doing today. So we will get somebody for a much lower price. I want the saving, much lower salary. I want the saving to go to the people of these great states in the form of energy savings. And that's a pretty substantial number. So, Kevin, could I ask you to start off say a few words? Well, I certainly appreciate that, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Kevin Lynn. I'm the Executive Director of Progressives for Immigration Reform and the founder of U.S. Tech Workers. And thank you for paying attention to our ad, Mr. President. Uh, we were founded, we founded U.S. Tech Workers three years ago to look at the and, and, and inform the public on the great harm that's being caused by the outsourcing and offshoring of our skilled labor jobs. And uh, Mr. President, I want to thank you for inviting us here on behalf of U.S. tech workers in the Tennessee Valley Authority. We appreciate your willingness to look at the endangered jobs of the Tennessee Valley Authority workers, especially in a time of pandemic and an election year when you've been so busy signing documents that affect the welfare of millions of Americans. Taking time to ensure that these hundreds of workers under your administration can continue to provide great services to the American people as they have since 1933 shows the people of Tennessee and beyond that you stand by your promise to keep American jobs with Americans. This is a historic moment that I'm hopeful will reverse the harm outsourcing and offshoring have done to our nation's productive classes. And it is my hope that Congress will join you, Mr. President, in making sure our workers are more secure in their jobs. Thank you, Mr. President. So you're the one that took the ad about me that I didn't know that. I'm just saying, you know, I think he's the one that took this really vicious ad. Like, I hired this guy for $8 million, and I had nothing to do with it. I said, what's that? But actually, you brought something very important up. Because when I looked into it, I said, this guy's actually making $8 million a year. And you did the ad. So you really made me aware of what was going on with the Tennessee Valley Authority, which has been a, a feeding pot for a long time and a lot of deep state, a lot of uh, swamp creatures, okay? So that's it. So we're going to make that. I see. So I think now you realize that it wasn't about me. I hope you now realize I do realize that, Mr. President. But if I can I accept, I accept your apology. <laughs> In full disclosure, Mr. President, when we sat down with the Davis Agency constructing the ad, right. they said, who's your audience? And I said, just one person. <laughs> he's the only one Smart. that would do this, and he's the only one that can come to the aid of these workers in the yeah. Tennessee Valley. It's the only one that he got to do. It, Absolutely. To do it. You are, I'll tell you, though, uh, I have to say, Kevin, the end was very appropriate. And while it has nothing to do with me, I can do things with respect to the board, and ultimately the board uh, controls that decision. This is a very, very old authority done in the 1933, yeah, Mr. So President. It was done during the FDR days. 
And it's been, you know, it's been getting crazier and crazier just over the years. And they have basically nobody watching over them, and the board isn't watching over them. You see this happening in uh, public companies also. You see it happening a lot. But for a, essentially, I would say for a federal employee to be paid $8 million, now what we're doing is we're looking at the board members. How much are they paid? Because usually what happens is they pay, and then he says, you know, I think you ought to get more money. And everybody's making a lot of money, and you're, your uh, pricing for electric and utility starts going up, and people say, I wonder why. Um, I also see that they're doing a lot of things in terms of electric, which is very expensive electric. They're uh, building facilities that are very, very expensive to build and don't work well. But we'll discuss that separately. But I, I appreciate it, because you did make me aware of what's going on, and it's a terrific thing we're doing today. Thank you very much, Kevin. Please, Stacy. how are you? I'm doing fine. Mr. President, my name is Stacy Wetzel. I'm the son of a sharecropper. First, I want to thank you for being the great American president you are and for caring about and looking out for the great American citizens and workers. We thank you for that. I picked cotton from the time I was big enough to carry my own pick sack until I married. My wife and I have been married 47 years and have seven children and 14 grandchildren. I began working for TVA in 1975 as a carpenter apprentice. Currently, I'm the system administrator on TVA's core team that's responsible for installing a $20 million computer system. Our team and the entire IT department have been praised and thanked multiple times this summer for the work outstanding performance we've done. So it was shocking and devastating to be notified on July the 23rd that IT leadership had decided our, t decided our team and a total of 40 workers would be terminated and our work done to others. This brings the total planned outsourced jobs to over 200 now in TVA information technology alone. We believe there are more planned to come. The three companies chosen to do the IT work are all three foreign companies that depend heavily on H-1B workers. We're required to train these our replacements, as President Trump said. Apparently, we're good enough to train but not retain. Using H-1B workers to replace capable and willing American citizens is turning entire communi American communities upside down. Left unchecked, it will turn our nation upside down and negatively impact our national security as certainly as our 50-year buildup of dependence on China for manufacturing has. Thank you, President Trump, for beginning to reverse that half-century mistake. American patriots will forever be grateful that you're also acting to blunt the misguided and out of control H-1B worker program. I thank you for putting American first and acting to stop this travesty. Well, you're a very powerful speaker, and so powerful that we just got a call. Mark just brought this in from the TVA CEO, and he's indicated a very strong willingness to reverse course. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Stacy did a much better job than me. I mean, you're talking, and all of a sudden, I get the note. He's sure so he's looking to change course and uh, reverse it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's good. Now, maybe he'll take a major cut in salary, too. That'll be phase two, right? So we'll, we'll take a look at that. And maybe uh, you'll start looking at that on behalf of everybody. Gratis, right? Your group? That's great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, TVA told me, while we were in this process of working on behalf of the workers, I'm the union president. IFPD uh, Engineering Association, they told me it's going to take a message, a stop order from the president in order to keep us from moving forward. And I said, I'm working on that. <laughs> so, you did a good job. I Everybody in this you. room did a good job. I appreciate you, and, sir. And uh, Congressman, you have my endorsement. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. You had it anyway, but well, you have it now. I appreciate it's a great you job. The only congressman in the room. I tell you, Tim, great job. But you, that's only phase one. Phase two is a man shouldn't be paid $8 million a year to run a thing that's pretty easy to run, in all fairness. It's not like uh, he built it. He didn't build it. He went there, and he's been there, and he gets a lot of money, and uh, it shouldn't be. $500,000 is a lot of money, right? Yes, sir. And uh, I'm willing to say he gets paid more money than I do. I don't care. Yes, sir. But, you know, uh, it shouldn't happen. So that's a start. That's a start. And I think we should find out what board members make, okay? Because I can almost guarantee you they're paid heavily. Uh, congratulations, Stacy. Really good. Please, Thank go you, ahead. Thank you. 
Yes, sir, Mr. President, thank you. My name is David Littlejohn. I am a soon-to-be father. Uh, this November, my wife will be giving birth to my first child. Uh, I am a long line, I'm the son of a long line of military men and women, so I was born with a heart of service. And with that, I love to serve the people of the Valley. Uh, I was told uh, July 23rd that I would be uh, sent home and to be trained, training a contractor from a H-1B dependent contract company. Now, I'm shaking right now because- You're doing great. Thank you. Um, you had a big victory already. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I'm shaking right now because this really impacts me and my wife and my unborn child. And I greatly appreciate everyone here to support us. I appreciate it and thank you very much. And uh, you'll see what happens. It's gonna be very quick too. Thank you. Wendy, please. Yeah, I'm Wendy Turner, and thank you for having us here. Uh, I've been a software engineer at, at TVA for 19 years, so I'm going to change my comments a little. I was coming in to say, you know, for the first time in, in 19 years, I didn't know what was going to happen to me and my kids, and I also take care of my mom, uh, what, what we were going to do going forward. So, and thank, this was, thank you. everybody felt this way in Tennessee Valley Authority then, I guess, right? If, if you do, You've been there for 19 years. So everyone had a feel this way, like uh, there's been a big feeling of doubt, right? Yeah. That's a terrible thing. You yeah. mean they're waiting for it to happen to them? Yeah, and I've been training since June. I've been training uh, our replacements from a, a company that, that relies on You've been on training training. people? Yes, yes, sir. And so did they lay you off that yet, or are you not sure? I, I got the notice in June that we would be laid off September 1st. So you're training people to take your job at uh, whatever, right? They, they told and where are the people from that you're training? Uh, all over the place. Um, we, uh, everything's done remotely. Are they from other countries? They're here on the soil now. I don't know their status as far as... Because um, with Disney, they were from other countries, right? Go ahead. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I know the company, we were, Accenture is replacing our, our group, and I know they, they rely heavily on uh, H-1B uh, workers, but uh, I, I, I don't know for sure where everyone is. Okay, well, we'll make sure that things work out for the three of them, because they're brave to be here, actually, Sarah, so you'll check that out, right? Yes, sir. Let's see that they get their jobs back. Thank you. Because I hear you're great workers. I mean, I said, I want people, but I also want people that are really good workers, that did a great job. Because, you know, people can be let go, should be able to, if they're not doing a good job. I'm all for that. I think, I'll bet you are. But I said, I want people that really do a great job and were unfairly let go. Right, Tim? That's, Absolutely. to me, very important. Thank you very much, Wendy. We'll see what happens. Okay, Thank you. We'll, we're going to push it hard. Uh, Chuck, please. Uh, Mr. President and Mr. Vice President, I recognize how busy your schedule is. I sincerely appreciate your time today. Okay. I'm Chuck Chudaskis. Uh, basically, I've had the opportunity to work with the really technically competent people of the Tennessee Valley for seven years, okay? It's been a great experience. I have a degree in electrical engineering, 45 years of valuable industrial experience, and I'm a certified security professional here, okay? Working with the people in Tennessee Valley, how I learned just how important the Tennessee Valley is to 11 million people in seven different states, okay? And how it basically impacts their lives. It's absolutely significant. That is the reason that I'm really here today. TVA basically has the capability to produce 35 billion watts of power. Okay, they have 17,000 lines of high voltage transmission. How does that compare to other big utilities, would you say? Uh, it definitely ranks right in the top of them. There's no question about it, and very significant. Um, Tennessee Valley is part of the Southeastern uh, uh, Reliability Corporation. And it's obviously one of the biggest players in that yeah, area. Yeah, it's very big. It's a lot. Very significant in that respect here, okay? And in essence here, as a consequence of that, they also basically support 35 dams that produce power from 29 to do flood control. Just a couple of years ago, they were able to reduce billions of dollars of potential damage by managing their rivers correctly, you know, in that case. Right. Yeah, three major power plants and nuclear What's power plants. What's your biggest dam? What's the big dam? Probably it would be Chickamauga or no, I think. Huh? Wilson and Alabama. That's okay. There's the expert right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I defer to the expert. But the bottom line of it, as a consequence of this, is a very, very important player not only in the southeast region, but for basically nationally. 
okay? And today, the TVA receives hundreds, if not thousands, of potential attacks, cyber attacks, testing its, its network here, right? It's imperative to have experienced, knowledgeable employees to handle that situation right. here, okay? Right. And, and a fine example of this, and I just kind of, you know, it's a little bit humorous, but the great uh, power outage in 2003 right. was affected by a software glitch, okay, that impacted and shut down Manhattan for 24 hours. I remember that very well. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might be related or familiar with that. So, as a counselor, it just really points the significance of having qualified, vetted people with proper clearance dedicated to that job. I agree. Okay. That wouldn't happen with you, would it, huh? Wouldn't happen. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, sir. Uh, and then, just very quickly, two other quick points. Basically, this outsourcing agreement could impact the Tennessee Valley. As always, our goals are to provide energy, economic development, and protect the environment. This particular uh, outsourcing agreement could impact the valley by $88 million to these local economies here. And for the individuals that are in there, not only may they lose their primary income, but they may uh, consequently have uh, insurance costs that basically reflect a three to 400% increase for these families and how they manage it. Yeah, and well, you're, like gonna lose, you're gonna lose people and you're firing people that are they, they live in Tennessee, and they live in Georgia, and they live in the other states that I mentioned, and um, it's not a fair situation. Go ahead. Let's, let's go, Chuck. Final point. The effort here to make America great again, okay, reflects the fact that we need to take into repatriate manufacturing companies and companies to take and spend our money domestically and support the domestic product. How can we justify spending these millions of dollars for one particular consulting firm Fifteen million dollars to Who's the consulting firm? Well, that would be Cap Gemini. You spend friend. fifteen million dollars a year on a consulting firm. Well, this was. A we just found another nugget of gold. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah doesn't care about that one, but that's it. I care about. You spend fifteen million to one consulting firm. It's not a consulting. That, that's one of the companies they're picking up, and it's Cap Gemini, and that's fifteen million that just for that one company. How many? How many are there? Like? Uh, there's Capgemini, CGI, Accenture, and Tech Systems at TBA. And they're paying tremendous amounts yes. of money. And our workers are very really capable. They're very political people. You know, it's a very political group of people you just mentioned. Really? Not I just to know me. that. Not to me. I don't care. I don't care who they are, but they, they are very political. Well, I mean, when these people are more than capable of doing the job and have done it with excellence, and TBA says your matrix for your performance is above, uh, it doesn't make sense, and what you're doing, it, I cannot tell you how much it means to me and for these workers. It, it, I, I'm, I'm a very emotional because uh, TVA is a large racket. They do their thing, and nobody can touch them. And I believe today they've been it's touched. A racket. They've been touched. No, it's a racket. Well, we just found that out. So. No, it's a racket. And, I mean, I understand that the four uh, firms that you just mentioned that have paid tens of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. they're very political firms. You know, they may well, be good, but they're very political firms, and they do it for much less, much, much, much less. You could give them half, you could give them 10 percent, they'd probably do it for. Those are big numbers for a consulting firm. Well, they're, they're not the consulting firm. They're the ones actually going to take these people's jobs. That, uh, That's worse. Yes, it is worse. So, uh, I mean, Tim, go ahead, please. Mr. President, thank Congratulations. you, Mr. Vice President, so much for this. Is, um, my mama worked at TBA after the second, during the, at the end of the Second World War, when Dad came over to the Pacific and married her, and then she went into education. But you know, working people are the backbone of this country. That's not cliche, and you yeah. you highlighted that so much with the trades and other things that I'm very appreciative of the fact. But I tell you what, Dad, I mean, if TBA wants to be Duke Electric, let them be Duke Electric. But they're not, and they they hide behind the government skirt. And they um, they use eminent domain, and their arrogance is beyond belief. Uh, you know, when they had the ash spill, people died, and then you know, and then they're just these poor country folks are just pushing them off till they all die off, till these lawsuits go away. It, it's no, ridiculous. Sure. And, and by the way, in Kentucky, when we wanted to have a plant open with a lot of jobs, they didn't even want to consider it. No, no, they didn't. It's the arrogance. You're questioning them, and finally, we have a president with the guts that understands business and government. And if TVA wants to be a government entity, they need to they need to declare it and quit using. They hide behind. You know, they have their. their you think their, Joe Biden would do this? Heck no. He wouldn't know you're he alive. Means, he wouldn't know. He doesn't know he's alive either. Yeah. <laughs> no. Can you imagine him sitting at this table right now? 
Wouldn't have a clue. No. Okay, so go ahead, Tim. No, I think you pretty much got it, Mr. President. I'm just honored to be here. And I well, I'm honored that you're here, and you've done a fantastic okay. job. And I thank you for standing up for work. And yeah, well, we're going to. We're going to get this finished, too. So we'll get it finished, Sarah. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. Yes, Gene, sir. please. Um, Mr. President, thank you for bringing this group together. And uh, this, this meeting has, I, I think, shown the very human impact on individual working wow. men and women of a, of a practice that's actually pretty widespread. And uh, the way it's worked under our, our immigration laws for a while now is that a company that wants to bring in workers from overseas, wants to use the H-1B program for high-skilled workers, has to file an attestation with, with us at the Labor Department saying uh, American workers aren't going to lose their jobs when I bring in these H-1B workers. And they have to say it's not going to hurt their wages. Well, what companies do is they bring workers in and then they lease them out to another company. And so you've got one company bringing them in and then leasing them to TVA. And it's true, the company bringing them in, their workers aren't being affected, but the TVA workers are. And so I took a look at this as your labor secretary recently, and I said to my staff, I said, well, if the workers are going to the other company, why doesn't the other company where they're actually gonna be working and supervised also file an application right. and say, uh, we're not going to uh, affect U.S. workers either. And I said to my staff, why can't we do that? They looked into it, and Mr. President, today you're going to be signing an order okay. that requires Please. that change. So going forward, when those workers are going to another company, both companies are going to accept and, and, and that's a, a change we'll make. Uh, the, we'll do it together with the Department of Homeland Security. I just want to mention one other thing we're doing together. Um, for more than 15 years, the Secretary of Labor has had the authority to initiate an investigation of abuse of the H-1B program when he or she finds reasonable cause. That has never been done. That authority has never been used. But again, uh, we saw, uh, signed a memo of understanding uh, on Friday with the Department of Homeland Security that'll change that too. They're gonna now share information they have, good which chance. I can then use to bring cases when we're finding very the program. Good. Good. You can find a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for this order today. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> right, Stace, right? You like that. You like that. We'll take it. Linda, please. Go ahead. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. President, for being with us today. Um, the concern you show for American workers is greatly appreciated. Um, and my mother made me promise to tell you that Alabama loves and appreciates your leadership. I love Alabama. I promise to my mother made. Um, my name is Linda McDonald. Um, I've lived in Northeast Alabama my entire life. Um, my goal was to work at TVA. That was my American dream. Uh, after years of sacrifice and hard work, I achieved that goal. I've been working for TVA for seven years now. Um, but, um, so, and in that role, I got to see every so day. So that was like an ambition of yours to work someday for TVA. Correct. And you finally got there. I did. So what's happening? Um, well, June 30th, we were told that we would be outsourced to a, another company with... All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, here and I am faced with... And they have all these consulting firms making 10, 15 million dollars a year. Yeah, I feel like And the man that heads it making eight million dollars a year, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I feel like my American dream was being stolen from me. Yeah. And given to someone else, so... Um, I just think. Is that the way you view it? Given to somebody else? It is. Yeah. It was taken from me. It's a very interesting way of viewing it, right? Um, so, I, I thank you for, for listening to us because it felt for so long like no one was even listening to us. So, thank you very much. Well, I've been hearing about it for a long time. When I was running, I met Sarah and we worked on the Disney situation. But that was a long time ago, but, yeah, you know, this is been happening for a while, so we're taking care of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Linda. Let's see what happens. You may be very pleasantly surprised, okay? I hope so. Thank you. Jonathan, please. Well, th thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, uh, my name's Jonathan Hicks. I'm, uh, I'm from a large family, and we've had uh, three, uh, three members of our family who have served in the, the U.S. military. I grew up in, uh, in Tennessee or around the Knoxville area and started my career at TVA in 2001 as, a, as an IT intern. Um, 
there, as soon as I graduated, uh, I got a uh, full-time job there, and I've been there for, for 19 years. I've been... And that was a big deal, right? Yes, yes, working, because there's a great prestige to that. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I, it's I've, terrific. Uh, I've, I've spent my time there uh, working for uh, River Operations for, the, for their group and um, helping them, you know, have programs, uh, mostly in-house solutions to uh, be able to manage the, the river and the river systems. Uh, I was told in, in June, early June, that I would be training replacements, uh, that I would be uh, receiving my RIP notice in uh, September, and uh, that uh, the workers that I've been training, uh, there's been five or plus that I've been training for my one position, and at least four of those seem to be H-1B uh, type workers. Um, uh, I guess there's a concern with the, the kind of stuff that, uh, that, that we do, um, at least for the, the river operations, and that they're generating a significant amount of power out of all, the, uh, out of, all, the, all of these dams. And, um, you know, is, is this something that, uh, that we want to turn over this knowledge, this uh, ability to control these dams, and, you know, whether it be generation, whether it be floodgates, and uh, hand it over to corporations that aren't in the U.S. to workers that aren't necessarily in the U.S. doing this work. Are you there now? Are you uh, well, I, I've been put on non-work status. I'm still employed and still getting a paycheck until September 1st. But uh, What I'm, happens in September 1st? Uh, well, I've been relieved of my job duties, but September 1st Wait, is And you I'm train I'm people to take your job? Yes. So you yes. worked with people to take your job? Yes. You've taught them, like, almost everything you know, but plenty, right? Maybe well, not. I, I, I think Maybe you held back a couple of secrets, but well, you know. I, I, I think there's, there's a learning curve, and there's, um, for, for the knowledge that, that, that they do there for river operations, I think it takes several years of, uh, of understanding the job in order to be able to, to do this. The, the people that are taking over the job have never dealt with uh, utilities. They've never dealt with uh, power generation. They've never dealt with any kind of water management or hydro generation. And so the, to, to say that they're ready to go is, is, is uh, a misstatement. So. Well, let's see how it works out, Jonathan. I think you're going to be in very good shape. Okay, I have a prediction. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Please. Oh, it's, I, I'm so honored to be here. Okay. Um, honored to have you. Uh, my name's Renee McKenzie, and I actually work for the Engineering Association. Um, as an advocate for these IT employees and for other um, white collar workers. But um, I've worked really closely with the IT professionals at TVA with all of this that has been going on. Um, I've had to witness the anguish of the different employees that are um, performing these knowledge transfers on the software and the applications that they actually custom built themselves. Um, but so many TVA employees have been there from the beginning of their careers. So to actually witness what's happening to them being replaced by these non-Americans is very difficult. But I think one of the hardest things to witness is what TVA is actually doing to themselves. I mean, their mission is about bringing economic development to the Tennessee Valley and to be taking that, um, taking our economy and just uh, giving it outside of the United States, it's just almost, it's unbelievable because of what they stand for and what they were built for was to come out and of economic. And you see them going outside of the United States, not just here. Right, you well, if you look at these companies, these companies are based outside of the United States. So, um, so when they're getting their millions of dollars, I mean, it's it's going to uh, France. It's really going to. Um, I think one of them is, is uh, India, India, Canada, uh, Ireland. Um, Ireland. and Ireland. Mm -hmm. So yes, our dollars are going to them. And they get us in many other ways too. But we're stopping it, as you notice. Um, yes, that's very interesting. So you would say France, India, Ireland, Canada. Who else? That's the main groups right there. Those right. Cool a, lot of the, the a lot of the work is being outsourced. Well, the main, all these firms, H-1B visa dependent, and the, and seventy percent of H-1B visa workers in the United States come from one country, namely India. And, you know, Ms. Brez and I worried too about it, the, uh, the national security. Yes. You know, we're during a pandemic; people are out of work, and our electric grid could be put in the hands of folks that maybe their loyalty isn't to this great country, and that bothers me. 
You know, with TVA more so than most companies, you're, right. you're talking about controlling all of that energy and power. It's, you're right. You're right about that, Tim. It was a very good statement. Anything else? Um, just, it, again, it's such an honor to be in your it's presence. My <laughs> it's my great honor. Do you know the man next to you is Ken Cuccinelli, a legend? <laughs> <laughs> Look, and I tend to be very quiet. He's a legend in his own mind. <laughs> Ken, uh, Ken's done a fantastic job on the border. Unbelievable job on the border. And uh, you might just tell us for a couple of seconds while we have the, uh, the media here. I'm sure they'll report it very accurately, how well we're doing on the border. And then maybe get on to make a statement, because I know you've been working with Gene and everybody very hard. Yes, and Secretary Scalia really covered the, the partnership with, between DHS and the Department of Labor to solve this problem. You're solving it forcefully today for these folks. Um, you're certainly putting the ball in motion to do that. And what we're, our two agencies at your direction from June yeah. are going to do is solve this permanently so that we never have to see this happen again. But um, on, the, on the border, um, we're seeing success with your leadership with Mexico and the Northern Triangle countries, the relationships you helped us forge last year in 2019 are bearing fruit at the border um, during a very difficult time with, with the uh, coronavirus and that task force, of course, led by the Vice President. And um, uh, the ability since March to uh, enforce the public health order there has changed the nature of our ability to protect the border. There are still people getting away more than we would like. But um, last year, they were running to us. This year, they're running from us at the border. Um, it's a bit different. And over 80% of the folks that we're apprehending are being returned to Mexico in under two hours, which is astonishing. It's just an astonishing it used to take, in some cases, years. Right. Years. Absolutely. Uh, it's been incredible what's happened at the border. And I think the wall is helping you quite a bit, right? And we have now about almost 270, 71 miles of wall. Everywhere that that new system has been in place, the Border Patrol agents are just universal in their praise for both their safety right. and the way it impedes illegal traffic. Not just people, but drugs as well and so forth. So it's extremely effective and it's going up faster and faster and faster. They had a human trafficker the other day saying that they used to go out and then traffic in human traffic, mostly women and children, but mostly women. And they'd bring them across the border, taped up and horrible. And this guy was saying how they used to go up and they'd make a left turn. They'd make a right and then a left into the United States. He says, and now we just keep driving. And there's this massive wall that nobody gets through. Nobody's getting through that wall. That wall is the real deal. And it's steel, concrete, and everything else, and lots of cameras all over it. That's right. And drones on top of it. And people aren't getting through. But it's been an incredible, incredible it's a real success. force multiplier for the Border Patrol and OFA. Yeah. And Mexico's helping us a lot. They have a lot better partnerships. A lot right. better par I remember how people complained about how you were pushing them so hard last year. But the partnership that's grown up with Mexico yeah, has been the best we have really had in decades, well, if not said. forever in cooperating and securing. They have a very good president who was just here two weeks ago. He was. He's really doing a good job. And we have 27,000 Mexican soldiers guarding the border. And they don't play games. They don't play games. It's been uh, pretty amazing. The numbers are way, way down. And we want people to come in, but they have to come in legally. And that's they what we're doing. Legally. You're that's doing right. a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. OK, please, go ahead. You can finish up. <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate you so much. I, re I really do. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm the uh, union president for the workers that are represented by this move that TBA has taken. Um, I've met earlier with Tim Burkett, and he told me how disgusted he was with it. Uh, but that was earlier. We've really tried to get our voice heard. We've been screaming, hey, hey, help us out. Finally, um, uh, U.S. tech workers came out, kind of put a commercial together, and of course, you know, um, that got your attention, and we appreciate it so much. I've lived my whole life in the Tennessee Valley region. My uncle was uh, worked at TVA during the World War II. He uh, laid his job aside and went and served and, and, and perished in that war. My mother told me TVA was a great place to work, and I, I've worked there now 35 years. This means a lot to the people of the Tennessee Valley region more than you'll ever know. I know that consulting companies looked at what to do with this IT work. They're now looking at what to do. The same consulting companies are looking at what to do with transmission work. That transmission 
that grid's got to be protected at all costs. I mean, we've got to, we cannot afford to let someone else who may not have the loyalty to our nation have the grid. And I think that, there, that some of these workers here at this table, IT workers, that's one of the biggest things they said to me, there's a large chance that, some, that we will be breached and we can't do that. And I, we tried to say but all with those our things. people running it, a very small chance, from what I understand. Yes, right, with the right people running yeah. it, right. But it, you can't give it to uh, just anybody. And that's why these workers at TV Air are so important. And I, I appreciate you and all that you're doing for us. Are the people that you're representing, are they, because you represent a big group of people, are they all nervous, like the folks at the yes. table, like Wendy? <clears throat> yes, they're, they're going, are nervous. we next, Gay? Is this what's coming next? And I, I, my answer is, uh, not, not tell them no. Watch if we can help tell them no. They're not okay. next. Thank okay. you. You can tell them. I think we can say that. So thank you very much. Thank you. I just think you bring in TVA back to their mission mm -hmm. of service to the people of the valley, service the people of the valley, and to this nation is 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 a pivotal moment for the Tennessee Valley Authority. So right now their mission is taking care of a lot of consultants and a lot of people and paying mm -hmm. paying uh, heads of this whole thing eight million dollars a year. And you'll find a lot of other things in there that are crazy. Well, people so. over profit, and, and, and that's what, what do the you're people doing of here? Tennessee think when they hear that the head of TVA, which has been running for a long time, and in all fairness, not a very difficult thing. There are many people who could do it. What do they hear when they hear? And they think of government, you know, it's sort of semi, I guess you call it public, private, but there's no private, really, when you think of it. So it's a board member. What do they think when they hear that the head person is making $8 million a year, which is, by the way, I said it before, the most highly paid person anywhere in any country if you call this government, which it sort of is. What do they think when they hear? Do they know he makes $8 million a year? Well, they do now after Kevin's commercial, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're pretty shocked. I mean, and, and in fact, the, I think the workers even, I think some of the workers at TVA have been shocked about that. Yeah. Um, and it is a lot of money. But people have known, I've known actually before the commercial, because we were looking at it, we sent them notices a year ago and two years ago, saying we want some information. And, you know, people have known this. I just can't even imagine that somebody gets paid $8 million a year. Well, well the difference It's the most sought-after job. It has to be the most sought-after job in any country, in any government. Right, Tim? You take the job. Would you resign from Congress immediately? <laughs> for one year. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you only did it for one year. You know? I don't know. You don't know my wife. Tim would take it. That's a great He'll take it only, no, only for a year. You just need it for one year. That's right. Anyway. So, yeah. So the workers, they, they are surprised at that. But, you know, back to the days of Kilgore and, and, and having worked there so long. I, I tell people I started when I was eight because I can't believe how long I worked there now. Right. But, but the, the truth is there are very capable people at TVA that love the TVA and the mission that they really were, were put together for. Uh, and would love to take that job. I even think they like your president, your current president. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the president. That's right. The boats on the lake, I'll say. Yeah. Trump, yeah. No, they're great, they're great people. And say hello to them. Just say hello. They're great people. Sarah, why don't you just discuss it real quick, and uh, you can maybe work with us in getting it all done very quickly, okay? Of course, President Trump. Thank you, thank you for having us and having everyone here and for all you're doing. Um, with regard to immigration. Um, immigration should be about America, Americans, and, and, the, and the immigrants. Right now, the way it was before you started working on it, it's always been big business, big tech, and universities. And with you, we are working to make immigration in America for the right reasons. And the Protect US Workers uh, endorsed you in 2016. We endorsed you in 2020. And we know for a fact that um, slow Biden and the Democrats will never push towards immigration that benefits Americans, America, and the immigrants. And I think they hide behind nationalists are bad, immigrants are kind and good, and if we are against the immigration the way it is now, then we are racist. But the reality is, if you can keep immigration the way it's going now and the way Joe Biden will push it, the problem is you're actually benefiting the big tech billionaires and universities, and that is not what immigration is about in this country.
Thank you. Where did you come up with the name Slow Biden? You know, so many people want me to use that term, and I say it's too mean, it's too nasty. <laughs> oh, no, that means I'm mean. And you just come up with that term. Where did that come from? Is it the... uh, my son, actually, is 11. <laughs> Your son, he's 11? <laughs> yeah. If he's 11 and he said he's slow, then he shouldn't be president. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> yeah, actually, just... during the um, rallies in 2016, you met my son, and right. he had a Thor, and he dressed him up like President Trump. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you, Sarah. Very <laughs> Thank you. Great job you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, okay, Thank you for all you do. We'll knock it out, sir. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I'll be, I'll just be very brief. Um, four years ago, when you ran for this office, you said the forgotten men and women of America would be forgotten no more. You said that we put America first, American workers first. You said that American workers would have a seat at the table in this administration, and we deliver real results. Um, and today we see all of that happen right in front of us uh, because of your leadership, Know, indicated during this meeting that the TVA is going to reverse course uh, on their plan to use H-1B visa workers to replace hardworking Americans. And I, I can see the gratitude and the emotion on faces around the room, Mr. President, and the gratitude that uh, these people feel and all of those that will be reading about this and hearing about this in the days ahead. But I also just want to say finally uh, to all of the, all the great Americans who gathered here have been willing to speak up, Know that with the executive order the president is signing today, we're not just solving your problem. What the president's committing to today is to end the abuse of our worker visa program once and for all, and pulling together multiple agencies to do that. And I want to promise you that um, you've not only gone out and been a champion uh, for fellow workers at TVA, but you've been champions for American workers all across this country. And I know I speak on behalf of the president and our whole administration when I thank you. Thank you for stepping up for American workers and making it possible for this president to keep one more promise to working Americans. God bless you. Little document now. Is that okay? I would love that. Right. Thank and you. it's a very important one. <laughs> Aligning federal contractors and contracting and hiring practices with the interests of the American workers, which is very simple, which actually just boils down to pretty much what we're talking about today. Okay? Thank you so much. We we'll give that to Sarah because she was there <laughs> Thank you really. so I have much. to give so I have to give one to you. You got us both in here. That's good. Thank you, Mr. Uh, will, will you pass these around the table? Uh, Mike will just pass them on that side. We'll pass them on this side. Only one over here doesn't get it. I don't think one so here we are. Yeah, I'll get you one, Tim. Don't worry. Oh, look. Uh, you got it? So thank you very much, everybody. So we're going to be, we're going to be discussing uh, very shortly a immigration bill, which covers this and many other things. It'll be a very, very comprehensive bill. That's a word that some people love and some people hate. Mm -hmm. But it'll be very comprehensive, only in the sense that it'll cover just about everything. It'll be based on merit. It will be uh, — it'll cover territory that nobody would have thought could have ever been agreed to. And I think it'll be bipartisan in the sense that People are going to like a lot of the things that are in there. Probably some people won't. Uh, we're going to have that. And we'll probably do it maybe a little bit after our convention. We'll sign it after the convention. Likewise, uh, we're going to be doing a uh, Health Care Bill Act. And it will be extremely comprehensive. It will cover a lot of things that nobody thought you would be able to get. And I mean in a positive way. And I think it will be very popular. And it will be a, uh, be a great thing for our country. In addition, we have many other things. But uh, immigration and health care doesn't get much bigger than that. Uh, immigration will be very merit-based, but it'll be, uh, it'll be great for the worker, and it'll be great for people coming into our country, but coming into our country legally and loving our country and wanting to help our country, as opposed to people coming in and they don't like our country. You see that? You see that with certain of our politicians that ran for office. 
I say, I don't think they like our country too much. All they do is complain. And uh, you would never tell them to go back to their own country, because that would be inappropriate, wouldn't it? But all they do is complain about our country, and their country is going to hell. So, uh, you know, it's sort of an interesting phenomenon. So the, the merit-based immigration is going to be incredible, and the health care bill or act is going to be something that I don't think anybody in this country thought they'd ever see. And we've done much of that. If you look at some of the legislation that we've passed, Ken, I think you can say very strongly, we've, did, we've, we've gotten things passed that nobody thought would be possible. Uh, whether it's right to try, that's where you're terminally ill and you don't have a right to use our great medicines because they haven't been approved. They're in a, a line of approval, and it takes a time. We've cut the time in half by the way, for approval by the FDA. But people are sick. We have very promising drugs, and they're not allowed to use them because, uh, I mean, they're terminally ill, and they wouldn't let them use them because of liability and other things. But uh, I got that taken care of, so right to try was a very important one. Getting a veteran's choice was so important. Having veteran's choice, nobody thought we could get that. Hasn't been done in 50 years. They have been able to get it. We got veteran's choice. We got veteran's accountability because we have so many other things, so many things. And on the border, Ken, we've done things that nobody thought would have been possible, right? Do you want to name a couple of them? Making enormous progress, in, a, in the, especially in the regulatory arena, reestablishing um, the 140-year-old uh, the American tradition of inviting immigrants here who can stand on their own two feet, as much like Sarah had said. Um, and uh, to add to this country, and not uh, while not becoming a burden on the country, um, we've uh, also the security that you've advocated for and, and pushed us to achieve has been unprecedented um, on a border that uh, we still have more work to do. Uh, but we, the amount of improvement in three years is just extraordinary. That and one more piece of legislation you know is near and dear to my heart that you led is criminal justice reform which was, uh, you know, lots of people before you talked about it, and this is the first administration to do it. Nobody else could have gotten that done. Nobody. That's right. We really thank Ken, but we thank a lot of people that came through. By the way, some conservative, very conservative, really wanted it, and some liberal wanted it. But we got criminal justice reform done. Nobody thought that was possible. The biggest beneficiary is African Americans and Hispanic Americans, I would say, and Asian Americans, the three the groups, but uh, tremendous uh, benefits. And, uh, you know, I, it's really amazing. When we got that done, we have people supporting that that I would have never thought would have supported it. Not for bad reasons, but they would have never supported it. And they actually led the way. It's pretty incredible. Criminal justice reform was a big deal. You know that, Tim. Yes, so you were helpful, actually. And I appreciate it. And. Thank you very much. Anybody have a question? Yes, Mr. Yeah, President. Please, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Mr. President, on TikTok, you said over the weekend yeah. that you were planning to ban it. Now that you spoke with the CEO of Microsoft after that, so could you give us an update on yeah. where you're at? We had a great conversation. Uh, he called me to see whether or not uh, um, how I felt about it. And I said, look, it can't be controlled for security reasons by China. Too big, too uh, invasive, and it can't be. And here's the deal. Uh, I don't mind if, uh, whether it's Microsoft or somebody else, a big company, a secure company, very, very American company, buy it. It's probably easier to buy the whole thing than to buy 30 percent of it. Because I say, how do you do 30 percent? Who's going to get the name? The name is hot. The brand is hot. And who's going to get the name? How do you do that if it's owned by two different companies? So my personal opinion was you're probably better off buying the whole thing rather than buying 30 percent of it. I think buying 30 percent is complicated. And uh, I suggested that uh, he can go ahead. He can try. We set a date. I set a date of around September 15th, at which point it's going to be out of business in the United States. But if somebody, and whether it's uh, Microsoft or somebody else, buys it, that'll be interesting. I did say that uh, if you buy it, whatever the price is that goes to whoever owns it, because I guess it's China, essentially, but more than anything else. I said a very substantial portion of that price is going to have to come into the Treasury of the United States, because we're making it possible for this deal to happen. Right now, they don't have any rights unless we give it to them. So if we're going to give them the rights, then it has to come into, it has to come into this country. It's a little bit like the landlord-tenant uh, without a lease 
the tenant has nothing. So they pay what's called key money or they pay something. But the United States should be reimbursed or should be paid a substantial amount of money because without the United States, they don't have anything, at least having to do with the 30 percent. So uh, I told him that. Uh, I think we're going to have uh, — maybe a deal is going to be made. It's a great asset. It's a great asset. But it's not a great asset in the United States unless they have the approval of the United States. So it'll close down on September 15th unless Microsoft or somebody else is able to buy it and work out a deal, an appropriate deal. So the Treasury of the — really, the Treasury, I guess you would say, of the United States gets a lot of money, a lot of money. Okay. Mr. President, can you explain why so many of the uh, public health experts on the coronavirus task force are contradicting you on things like why the virus is so widespread in this country, on the effic uh, efficacy of hydroxychloroquine? Why are so many of these people on your task force contradicting you? Well, I think we're doing a great job. I think we're doing great on vaccines. We're doing great on therapeutics. You'll be seeing that very soon. I think we're uh, — when you look at a map, this is a map of the — I, I've, I've sort of shown that around a little bit, but that's — the red is the area of most concern. It's a pretty recent uh, map of the — of the country. And uh, there's a lot of — a lot of people that — in a lot of areas that have gotten very, you know, better very fast. Uh, hydroxy uh, has tremendous uh, support, but politically it's toxic because uh, I supported it. If they would have said, do not use hydroxychloroquine, under any circumstances, uh, they would have come out and they would have said it's a great — it's a great thing. Many doctors uh, have come out strongly in favor of it. They want it very badly. It's a great malaria drug. So for many years — so for, let me finish my — let me finish my answer. Uh, so for many years, uh, it's, I guess, 60 years, it's been a malaria drug, very successful, as you know. And it's been also a drug for lupus. And it caused no trouble, virtually nothing in terms of uh, — causing people to get sick or having problems with anything. You add the zinc and you add the uh, zithromycin, uh, the z pack as they call it, and uh, it's been very — I happened to take it myself, the, the threesome. I took it myself for a period of two weeks. I've been I, — I had no problem. I had no problem whatsoever. And importantly, I, you know, didn't test positive. That's very nice. Okay, I'm very happy about that, negative. And so uh, — so that's the story. It's uh, it's very highly thought of. Uh, interestingly, a, a great doctor, from what I understand, a great doctor from Yale, feels very strongly about hydroxychloroquine. Uh, the Ford Clinic in Michigan uh, came out with a very very powerful paper saying it's very good. Uh, many other in France, as you know, they came out with a very positive statement. Many individual doctors have come out with very positive statements. Uh, I will tell you that if I was surrounded by people, as I was at the time. The reason I took it, you know, we had some people that were relatively near me that uh, tested positive. And I took it for that reason, just because I've heard good things. Uh, but Fauci says it doesn't work. Uh, well, Jawaz says it doesn't work. I don't work. agree with Fauci. They're on your task force. I don't agree with Fauci. Look, Fauci uh, didn't want — and I, I like him. I get along with him actually great. But he didn't want to ban people from China from coming into the country. And I overrode him. and. I did the right thing. Uh, he was saying face masks are no good a short while ago. So it doesn't mean he's a bad person, because he's not. He's a good person. I like him. But we, uh, we disagree on things. We disagree on things. Now, I will say this. Uh, we've done an amazing job with ventilators. We're supplying the world with ventilators. Ventilators are very hard, very expensive, very hard to make, very complex, uh, very complicated machines, very why Very you, expensive. Why hold it. Hold it. Have so many deaths. Hold it. The U.S. has so many deaths compared to hold it. so many countries around the world. Fake I, news, CNN. Hold it. Uh, we have done a great job in this country. We haven't been given, and not me. I'm not talking about me. Vice President, the task force have not been given the kind of credit. If you look, countries all over the world are exploding right now. People that you said were doing a wonderful job, so wonderful. But right now, take a look at the countries that are exploding. You have Italy back. You have Spain back. You have France back. You have Germany back. You have a lot of countries. And that's not to knock them. It is a very delicate, very contagious disease. It was released by China. 
It should never have been allowed to release. There was the source where you could have stopped it. And they did stop it from going into China, although now they say that China is having a lot of problems. Uh, Moscow in Russia is having tremendous problems. What China unleashed was a very, very sad situation. With all of that being understood, the United States has done an amazing job, a great job. And you're going to see that because we have vaccines and we have therapeutics coming very soon. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. President, why are you not involved directly in negotiations with, with Capitol Hill? Oh, yeah. oh, I, the fact that I'm not over there with Crazy Nancy? No, I'm totally involved. I'm totally involved. involved. And we're going to be doing some things that are very good because we don't think that she — look, what Chuck Schumer wants more than anybody, and I would say Nancy Pelosi would be second, they want to bail out cities and states that have done a bad job over a long period of time. Nothing to do with coronavirus or China virus or whatever you want to call it. They want to bail out cities and states. They want bailout money. They want a trillion dollars in bailout money. And a lot of people don't want to do that because we don't think it's right. The Democrats have run some very bad states and some very, very bad cities. And a lot of people don't want to give them a trillion dollars to reward them for doing a bad job. If you look at some of the states, I won't insult anybody by naming those states, but you know what they are. They want bailout money. They're not interested in the people. They're not interested in unemployment. They're not interested in uh, evictions, which is a big deal, the evictions. They want to evict. A lot of people are going to be ev evicted. But I'm going to stop it because I'll do it myself if I have to. I have a lot of uh, powers with respect to executive orders, and we're looking at that very seriously right now. But what the Democrats want, they want it. They're slow rolling it. And all they're really interested in is bailout money to bail out radical left governors and radical left mayors, like in Portland and places that are so badly run. Chicago, New York City, you see what's going on over there? Bail out cities and states who have been poorly run and spent a fortune doing it. They want a trillion dollars, and we're really not interested in that. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.